What is going on, everybody? Welcome to another edition of Talking Elite Fitness. I'm Sean Woodland with Lauren Khalil and Tommy Marquez. Coming to you on a Thursday uh, early, well, late morning, I guess, for us. Lauren's on a Thursday afternoon. How's everybody doing today? It's snowing where I am and where you are. It was snowing where I was. <laughs> I was in shorts yesterday, and I had to put sunscreen on my kid. And then today it was like, I mean, it was legit blizzards out there, like giant snowflakes where I live. It was awesome. And now it's gone. <laughs> Nothing really stuck. <laughs> Californians, we're just amazed by weather because we're just not yeah, used right. to it. Because it never <laughs> snows. I mean, up at, I'm, I'm up at 2,300 feet, but I mean, it, it was it was coming down pretty hard, man. It was, it was cool. So uh, The way you showed me your backyard and you're like, look, look at these snowflakes. Because <laughs> <Right? laughs> we don't get that here. Yeah. I mean, we had, we had uh, the worst winter we've had in like 40 years last year. And this place oh. shut down like where I am. I and mean, there was there was no there's no snow equipment to, to like plow rows that we were the neighbors were just getting out their four wheelers and attaching a, a a plow to it and trying to help each other out like it was brutal we didn't have power for like 12 days it was not fun so all the all the doomsday preppers are just excited yeah, yeah. Like, it's, we it's, we're training for this our whole lives we finally have it so uh we have a we got a good show on tap for today we're going to talk about some headlines here in just a second and then later on in the show we will be hearing from andre Houday as he will break down the first window for the team quarterfinals. Tommy talked to him earlier today, and uh, he had some some great insight. That is a guy who has really made, I think, the seamless transition from athlete to coach. And I'm looking forward to hearing his insight. I think because, and he talks, he'll talk about it a little bit uh, because he was his own coach for a time as an athlete. He started to make that uh, analytical adjustment from just being an athlete and doing kind of doing what you're told, understanding the stimulus and doing that for the purpose of, you know, building your own fitness to then, all right, how do I apply that elsewhere? Because he wanted to, you mm -hmm. know, share that information. He has a very analytical mind and a good way of breaking it down. The entire time I was like, just like, oh, this is this is great. Whether it was applicable to me for someone who's not doing team. I, there were a lot of things that he mentioned and how he approached and looked at it that I was like, I got to take this down for individual quarterfinals just mm -hmm. to understand that thought process because I like the way he breaks it down. He's clearly very intelligent, very driven, um, and he had some great insights that not just good for uh, elite athletes, but for every range of quarterfinals athletes. Mm -hmm. All right, we're looking forward yeah, to hearing so that. He's so well-spoken. I can't mm -hmm. wait. Yeah, he is a guy that I don't have a lot of experience with, but in the limited amount of time that I've had to kind of watch him and, and see how he interacts with other athletes, it was clear that he he had it between the ears. I got, yeah, I got yeah, to I got, I got to spend cool. some time with him in like uh the sanctionals era and he was he was one very respectful to mm -hmm. like like just in general, like the way he carries himself, um, the the respect he holds for the other athletes, coaches, um, everyone involved in the sport blew me away and and you can tell that that I'll, that just that baseline level of i have respect for anyone that that steps into this arena allows him to see the sport in a little bit different light i think mm -hmm. mm. all right let's jump into the headlines and get you caught up on what's been going on this week first off I want to talk about reps ahead they had their uh pro 2 showcase i believe uh, they referred to it as or the pro two card that took place in jacksonville florida took, it took place this last saturday and it featured four matches and two of which were billed as you know, the pro matches one that the first that featured dallin pepper going against james Sprague. the second was fisa Gothi against alexa Raptus. and if you don't know what reps ahead is what they do is and it's pretty it's an interesting concept is that they get two athletes together they put them through a workout and it's whoever, once you get 30 reps ahead, you win. So the workout that they put the athletes through athletes through this time were, it was six bar muscle ups, 36 double unders, and then six hang squat cleans. I believe the weight was 165 for the men, 110 for the women. And you work two minutes on, you get a minute rest. And they just keep a running tab. Then you start back at the beginning of the workout and then you keep going. Uh, the two undercard matches were decided before the seventh round. The pro matches were not. And it's, I think it's, it's fun to watch. I th it's very easy to understand. If you're someone who's, you know, doesn't know a whole lot about CrossFit, you can kind of jump right in and just get, okay, this, 
once that scoreboard says 40, it's over and that person wins. Uh, and I, I think it's got a lot of legs. Like I'm, I'm, I think they're, they're Phil Thomas, the guy who created this is, is onto something. Mm -hmm. There's so many things that I like about it. Mm -hmm. I like that it's inside an affiliate. So you're really giving back to the community and people Mm -hmm. at that affiliate can obviously just come and spectate and it's super accessible to them. I like that the workout always changes. So it kind of gives that carrot of, oh, what's the workout going to be? And what are the athletes that we think would make a really good matchup? And as Sean, I think you you were talking about this the other day is you could teach your mother, your grandma, people who are not involved in CrossFit to get excited for this because it's so basic Mm -hmm. and so visual of the, the point of it to gain fans. And I think that that's really cool. No, and there's an aspect of this and it, I, I was kind of thinking back to our days when we worked for CrossFit and we would have these brainstorming sessions of ways to just create a uh, fan engagement for athletes in a way that fits outside of the season. And one idea that we, we tossed around, I, I want to say it was maybe 2016 ish era was the idea. And this was partially spurned on by the existence of another one V one type uh, program that was rush club back in the mm-hmm. day. If you remember that was down in uh, based out of Scottsdale, but we were trying to think of ways to have the elite athletes out compete out and doing things in a way that got them more presence and more opportunities to showcase their skills. And we thought of like one V one matchups was, was one, another one, which touches on something we're about to, to hit a, in a few moments with a head to head matchup, but like doing things like how, how can we do like a Fran challenge? Like let's find mm-hmm. the best in the world at Fran. Let's find the best person in the world at grace. And let's do these little one-offs where we can apply the fitness that we build in the gym in a very specific and a very highly pointed way that just, showcases to the world these freak like aspects of fitness and mm-hmm. i think this is part of that obviously with the one the the head-to-head matchup and the multitude of combinations they can do with workouts um i think finding you know the best in the world at this particular thing which is something that other sports try to find a way to do but we can kind of fit within the framework here and there's a lot of legs to create variety there so it's not just the same thing over and over and over yeah. again uh and you can have some bragging rights can you imagine have being having the fran world championship belt yeah i really oh, just yeah. want to turn this into pro wrestling you know <laughs> so we can all have championship <laughs> belts um and, and you know and people can wear those crowns but i i just think that would be super cool and and i watched the vast majority of it i missed the end i had to go i had to leave uh but they had a you know, the broadcast wasn't complicated and i was still entertained and you know you shout out to brian friend who i think wore like nine hats during that broadcast and did a fantastic job of keeping things move, moving along but you, you you see like the foundation is there and if you there's like some little things that maybe you could add to help enhance the viewer experience but the the, the like the basic bare bones stripped down thing is, is really cool and fisa Gaffi, i mentioned is one of the athletes uh, who was in that matchup with Alexis Raptus. And Lauren spoke to Fee about her experience in Jacksonville. Oh, this was way more fun than I was expecting because this is like the first time that I've done it. And I loved every bit of it. One, because I love the idea of having these events within the affiliate. It just brings me back to, you know, your local, co- like anyone that's done a local competition, you get your local competition feel. It's within, it just feels very grassroots, you know? And mm-hmm. I love that you get your members coming in and cheering you on. You get people from other affiliates like locally coming in. It just felt so like home and so much like how I first started competing in CrossFit in local competitions. And obviously being in our home affiliate feels even more special, but you just felt so much more connected. And the fact that it was just one against one, you just feel like, you know, you're putting on a show and it's just eyes on you versus you know, you're in a lane of 10 girls, 20 girls, like just eyes on two people. And it just, oh, it, I thought it was just so much more intense and you're going back and forth on reps and it was just awesome. It was way more, I got way more nervous than I thought I was going to get, you know, at first I was just excited. And then it was like the butterflies of like, we're going out and competing and it's just eyes on us. It was so awesome. Really looking forward to seeing more of those and uh, always, always good hearing from Fee. I mean, if you meet someone who doesn't like Fee Sagafi, you should run from that person. Oh, 100%. If you don't like Fee, you 
or something. Yeah, like you got some problems you got it. because she's it, thing. Yeah, keep one eye open all at all times around that mm-hmm. person. Yes. <laughs> Speaking of one-on-one matchups, there is one coming up uh, April 10th that is going to be on the Barbell Spin YouTube channel, and that is Colton Mertens against Jake Berman. They're going to do 100 bar facing burpees. Nine takes home a thousand bucks. So there's there's something on the line here, and I, this is and again, it doesn't always have to be about fitness and finding the fittest. And do we have a well-rounded test? It can just be, hey, who's better at this? And let's put two people in the in on the floor together and throw down. And the smack talk that this has created on social media is what me as a sports fan wants to see. The way that Training Think Tank was saying nobody can beat Jake Berman at burpees. And then Colton Merton starts chirping in and he was like, yeah, who's this Jake Berman guy? I am the best at burpees, so I'm going to win. And like the back and forth conversation it has just like built all of this hype that when it had to get rescheduled, I was super bummed. I was like, Oh man, I had my popcorn ready. I really wanted to watch it later. It still will be happening, but I cannot wait to see how that goes. Oh yeah. And, and this kind of touches to what I was just speaking before fees soundbite is this is where I think you could incorporate these into these types of shows. Who's the best in the world at, at, at burpees. Mm -hmm. All right. Prove it. Let's, let's let's figure out a way to get people involved, to get money involved, whatever. I mean that I I don't know about you, but what is that? Ten bucks a burpee? That's <laughs> good motivation. Normally, I give away a lot more than that every time I <laughs> drop my two hundred twenty pound frame to the ground. Um, so I I just think that's great. It's like if we could figure out a way to have a comprehensive like competition platform beyond this that uh beyond the season that's also like all right, hey who's the best one in the world at fran who's the best in the world at burpees mm-hmm. who is the best in the world at this and and there's a way to be like hey put your money where your mouth is let's do it um you know i think that'd be great because it adds a little edge it, yeah, it adds some edge it adds a little bit of flair it adds a little bit of i don't know a little spice mm-hmm. a little wizard pepper you know to the mix and 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 hopefully you know keep us engaged and give the athletes more ways to just showcase what they do yeah and this goes back to you know reps ahead too if they were to come up with sort of their standard reps ahead challenge and you have a champion of that you know what's wrong with having a, a specialist who can come and be like i've been practicing this i know that i'm pretty sure i can beat this guy and you know you have the championship on the line and mm-hmm. it's uh yeah I, I think too often one of the things with with crossfit in competitions we always the first thing i think a lot of people look at is well is this a balanced test of fitness well, why does it have to be why can't we just you know who's the best at burpees who's the best at at fran who's the best at yeah whatever it is and and, and have a fun little competition and i, I like these little one-on-one uh one-offs yeah I think they're great for the sport and I, I think they build interest in it it's uh, and and it's an opportunity for the athletes to compete and win money in a setting that's you know not going to thrash them that's important too right because the, one of the age-old questions is how do we increase visibility and opportunity for these athletes without drastically taking away their ability to compete long term mm-hmm. right you know like that root like destroy their shelf life and also do like just mess up you know the season for them yeah and i think i think this is an opportunity to one do that but two also in that same breath which is very difficult to do give them the opportunity to just sell out right yeah like, yeah. like how how That's often fun to watch mm-hmm. yeah it's it's right right because we, we're and let's be real about what we're looking for here. We're looking to find the limits of human capacity in some of the, in many of these ways. And the way that CrossFit is structured because of the multi-day, multi, you know, function test that we have more often than not, athletes are at least for that moment, always keeping a little bit in the tank until they need it. Right. Mm-hmm. And like, I, what, what are the moments that stand out in your mind? It's, it's Tim, Paulson just I was hammering just the bike, yeah. hair yeah. flowing. Mm-hmm. It's it's Dan Bailey just looking like he's Hunter Hearst Helmsley spitting water into the crowd, <laughs> but it's all slobber. You know, it's 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 that kind of stuff. Like when you were like, oh, they really sent it. And and with this one like singular test, you can do that, and mm-hmm. it's not going to wreck you. Yeah. Well, it will wreck yeah. you in the moment, but not long term. <laughs> well, speaking of good things that are happening in the competitive world, let's go over to the world of strong woman and mm-hmm. what rogue fitness is doing here and the rogue invitational so i'm going to pull up their instagram page and i'm going to call up this uh this post here 
the current prize purse for the strong woman competition that's going to be added to the Rogue Invitational for the first time. So that two years ago, they add they they put the the strong women on the same stage as the strong men at the Arnold Classic in Columbus, and it was a great competition to watch. This last year they did it again. And was probably, I would argue, was probably more exciting than the men's side of things. A half point separated first from third. That's how close it was. And the woman who won, and you'll see her here on this post, she's uh, carrying the Denny Stones, was Angelica Jardine. And she showed up like just sort of an unknown and wound up winning. Now, the, look at the current prize purse. One, more than $1.7 million for the women. That, if I'm not mistaken, That's real money. that is, I mean, it's huge. And yeah, it's more than I think the men make. In some of their competitions, well, the, like, like, the world's strongest man. I think it's more than the, the winner of the Arnold walked away with. Like this, I I love everything about this because the women who compete in this sport are unbelievable. Uh, if you watch the Arnold Strong Woman Classic back in March from uh, Columbus, you saw Sam Bellavo set uh, a record on the dumbbell press with at, at 185 pounds. You saw Angelica Jardine on the Denny Stone carry. There were just so many fantastic moments. Like this, it reminds me just a lot of what CrossFit does. And that's understanding that the women's competition is as big, if not a bigger draw than the men's competition. So kudos to Rogue for doing this. And I can't wait to see how this plays out in Scotland. Yeah, it's 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 awesome. It was, you, the the women, uh the woman the winner of the war, rogue invitational strong women's competition is gonna make more than the world's strongest man competition has paid out for the men. Mm -hmm. And that's huge. And I, and honestly, I think that I think the Shaw Cl Shaw Classic, uh, at least last year, I believe, laid claim to the strongest man on earth as to they took over that trademark or whatever it may be. But I think Rogue makes a case here for eventually trying to take over the throne of the strongest man and woman competition when it comes down to both exposure testing opportunity prize money all of those things and they've just started to become the preeminent uh, player in that space not just with the the arnold strongman classic which they put on also their own event that now is going back to a place that has huge roots in uh, strength sports going over to scotland like this is a play for the top spot mm -hmm. Yeah. And especially now that they're changing locations too, I think it's just one way that rogue is really pushing the threshold with mm. being the first to do something like this, mm -hmm. showing that like we can have one stage with both the men and the women and now showing a prize purse like that. Like we said, this is real money. Like <laughs> this is a serious mm -hmm. income for these competitors, which just further professionalizes the sport as a whole. And, and what I love and I mean, I'm biased. I get to I get to work with with Rogue, and I'm, I'm certainly I'm so thankful to do it because it's such a first class organization. But what I love about this is that they said it's not like we're throwing. All right, we're gonna throw the women a bone and put them on the same stage. It's no, no, no. We're this is the same thing. We are elevating it to the same level. It's not just it's not just charity. It's not just hey, let's try to have an exhibition to get more eyeballs on the sport. It's no, we're gonna do it, and we're gonna do it the right way, and we're gonna do it for the right reasons. And I think that. Uh, I'm super excited about that competition. I mean, it's, it's going to be, it's going to be a lot of fun. And, and like you both mentioned going to Scotland in a, an area that is just steep and perfect and, place. Yeah. It's, this is, I think this is going to be the first year where the CrossFit competition probably takes the back seat. It's not the top build thing. And there's nothing wrong with that. Like it's yeah. still, that's still going to be it, it, at the very least they're going to be on equal footing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I, I think it's a, it's a great move. And and uh, kudos to, to Rogue. I'd probably just give them a preemptive PR for that move. All right. The other big thing that happened is that we now know quarterfinals workouts for the teams. So let's uh, let's bring those up and we'll and we'll shuffle through those. There's four different challenges. The first one, team quarterfinal workout number one in male female pairs, alternating pairs. Every two minutes, you complete five rounds of. 10 synchro burpees over the bar, 10 synchro front squats, the weight at 125 for the women, 185 for the men, and then max muscle-ups. And you have to complete five rounds total or five rounds each? I believe it's five rounds total, but okay, five uh, rounds. Let, let me pull Go up. look at the official ruling on that. Yeah, I, I have uh, – I, I, I should – 
I just went through this. <laughs> yes. So um, let me pull up the scorecard. If you and if you go to the games.crossfit.com and you watch some of the descriptions, it's much more detailed. But we're just going to go through the just the top level stuff here because Tommy and, and Andre take more of a, a deeper dive into at least the first window, which would be the first two workouts. Yeah, correct? it it's uh it's uh it's five rounds each pairing. Right. Okay. Yeah. So five rounds each pairing. So there's there's your first one. Workout number two. By the way, no shuttle runs. So Tim Paulson, if you're listening, you got to do some shuttle runs. <laughs> at least in the team competition. That. Yes. Team quarterfinal workout number two is 50, 30, 20 reps for time of alternating dumbbell snatches. All teammates will be synchronized on the alternating dumbbell snatches. 50 pounds for the women, 70 for the men. So we're jumping that up from the open. And then toes to bar. And then the mixed gendered pairs have to be synchronized on their toes to bar. So everyone does 50 reps of the dumbbell snatches, 50 reps of the toes to bar, then 30, then 20, then you're done. So more synchro work. One part as uh, all four, and then one part as pairs. So that one's pretty simple. Okay, that's the end of window number one. Now, window number two is a workout three. Now, this is in same gendered pairs. Pair one followed by pair two, a 500-meter row. So each athlete rows 500 meters. 50 total handstand push-ups, one station switch as needed, and then 50 synchro wall ball shots. Then pair two comes in. They do the same thing. Then pair one comes back out, and then they do that in reverse order. 50 synchro wall ball shots, 50 handstand push-ups, and you end with a 500-meter row. There's a 25-minute time cap, a 14-pound ball for the women, 9-foot target, 20-pound ball for the men on a 10-foot target. That's a a lot of work gross mm -hmm. yes <laughs> and like then finally one. i do too uh I hate finally it. <laughs> team quarterfinal <laughs> workout number four as many reps as possible in 15 minutes of uh 30 deadlifts for the women 30 deadlifts for the men and i believe there's one barbell and they can switch off however they want then 30 shoulder to overheads for the women 30 shoulder to overheads for the men the deadlift weight for the men uh is 315 the shoulder to overhead weight is 185. Deadlift weight for the women, 205. Shoulder to overhead weight, 125. That's a 15 minute AMRAP. And those, no, that's, fun. that's a good one. It's a lot of swapping a barbell around. And those are your four. Those are your four quarterfinals workouts. Um, initial thoughts. Uh, yeah, I, I, it's funny because I always like to go see like what people will complain about. <laughs> <laughs> Um, go to the comment section and and you know like people are like oh there's no maximal lift or like power output test um but i think a lot of the stuff that i cover with andre really really does a good job in highlighting the ways that this is actually more balanced than people think and more mm -hmm. skilled and more um i guess the best way is just to say more difficult than most people give it, will give it credit for because I think it's easy for people to look at it on paper and be like, ah, yeah, poo-poo it. But then when you actually get into the nitty gritty of doing it and then apply it in a way that has intensity, like I think uh, people might have a, a differing opinion on it once it's all said and done. And I, mm -hmm. I, I yeah, I, I'll, I'll defer to what is coming in just a few moments with what, what I said with Andre, because he, he put it in better terms than I really could. Yeah. Well, well and with only four tests, if you have one of those, a max lift that, and trust me, I love a good max lift, but that just skews it so much that I, I'm curious to see what the leaderboard looks like, especially after window one. But I think Andre has more mm -hmm. good insight. Yeah. <laughs> when I, go ahead, Tommy. I was to say, because, you know, people will hear in just a second the our our first window discussion but in the second window we talked about the loading that's there for that that fourth mm -hmm. test mm -hmm. and i think a lot of people will be like yeah i'm good here for for a set right but i think a lot of people are going to get jacked up by that barbell shoot up you know yeah mm -hmm. especially as you get past the five ten minute mark to and you have to continue to maintain high output for the reps there and um yeah, I, I think there's some there's good reason to believe that it still accomplishes a good good deal in allowing the best to separate for sure, given how things are placed in in the sequence of events. Yeah, the only thing that I'll add to that is just 
uh, I, when I look at these, they they seem that they they continue the theme that we saw in the open. Accessible. If you made it this far, you should be as a team. You should be able to look at these and say, okay, we can get, we can do these. There's, I don't think there's anything in there that that teams that got to this point would say, ooh, I don't know if I can, I I can make it there. Now, some of those weights might be a little heavier. Dumbbell snatch is, is heavier. Uh, the shoulder overhead is heavier. You might struggle with that, but I think for the most part, you can gut through it. So it allows everybody to play, but the best of the best are going to hammer these and they're going to be the ones that are going to be separate.